So I wanted to give a quick breakdown between an OLED iPhone that I have here and an LCD iPhone and to kind of demonstrate what some of the differences are between these two panels. Now I will tell you there are tons of differences. I'm going to talk about them at a very high surface level opinion and I will start off with the way they look. Now these two iPhones, the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 has an IPS panel, the iPhone 12 has a Super Retina XDR OLED panel, and side by side, you may not even be able to tell too many differences. But I can definitely tell you, when you're looking at both these phones in real life, there are some subtle differences here and there, and it really depends on how close you look at them. If I looked at the iPhone 11, then I looked at the iPhone 12, I don't really think I'd be able to tell that big of a difference, but it's not until you put them side by side, that's where things start kind of looking a little bit different for the most part. Now between these two phones, and the big thing to keep in mind, a lot of LCD iPhones Apple is made, they are sometimes low resolution. The iPhone 11 is like 750p, the iPhone SE 3 is also around the same type of resolution. You have phones like the iPhone 8 Plus that I have here that are 1080p that have about a 10, you know, 1080p panel so it's very sharp for the most part, but the iPhone 11 and a lot of other subsequent iPhones all have LCD panels. Now with the Super Retina XDR OLED or OLED panels in general, these include the iPhone 10, 10s. 13s, you know, pretty much a lot of other phones that Apple has made, they're all OLED panels. The biggest takeaway to remember is that most of the time, a lot of IPS panels may be a little bit cheaper for phone manufacturers to implement. That's why you see them mostly on budget tier phones, including the iPhone SE3, SE2, iPhone XR. OLED panels are a little bit more expensive. And the biggest thing to keep in mind is that with an OLED panel, all of the dark pixels that you see are pretty much turned off by the display. So if I go ahead and make my way over to my settings application, if I go and click onto the display mode and I go in dark mode, if you see all those dark, you know, little pixels all across the board that are completely dark, those are turned off pretty much by the display. With something like the iPhone 11, that is not quite the case. So if I go ahead and make my way over here, I click on display, and if I go and click on dark mode, those dark pixels are still fairly dark and I'll probably, you know, have to edit this video so it's not going to look completely as it does in real life, but you can tell that the panel is still on, the whole entire display is still on because it's an LCD panel, it's not like an OLED display. So because of that, you tend to save a little bit more battery life on something like an OLED iPhone, especially when it has a you know dark mode or dark wallpaper embedded within it. So that is a big thing to keep in mind. If you want a phone that's going to last a little bit longer in terms of battery life, an OLED iPhone is definitely going to be there for you. The LCD phones are still very good, but the, you know the dark pixels aren't turned off all the way. Now another thing is viewing angles. From everything that I've seen, and as you can even tell from this light little angle here, you can see that on the same exact brightness for the most part, the viewing angles are definitely better on the iPhone 12 with an OLED panel. And it's not like these iPhones are 40 years apart from each other, they're literally just one year apart. And you can see viewing angles, in my experience as well, have pretty much always been better on OLED iPhones. So one thing we're getting is the panel looks better on the OLED iPhone, the you know battery life tends to be better on OLED iPhones, and the viewing angles are better on OLED iPhones too. But there are some features of LCD for iPhones that I like a lot, and one of these is actually burn-in for the OLED you know, displays. Burn-in is essentially when your iPhone kind of like burns in exactly what's on that screen onto the actual display. So typically you don't see this on LCD phones, although you know you can still see it for the most part. I have an iPhone 10 here, I believe, that also has a lot of burn-in built inside of it. And what ends up happening is basically over time, and what ends up happening is, imagine if you're just leaving your iPhone on for like a week or two by accident, you don't mean it to be on, but for some reason you leave your iPhone on all the time. You ever see those iPhones that are on store kiosks? They tend to have burn-in, you know? LCD iPhones don't really have that. So here's an OLED iPhone, the first iPhone OLED display, and you can see if I go and turn up the display right here, they actually have burn-in on it. So if I go in here, you can kind to see like there's like a navigation bar or something you know burn into the display it's not a crazy big deal for a majority of people because you're probably not going to be affected by it personally i haven't really been affected by it too much on my personal iphones even though i use these iphones heavily but it is still one of those things to keep in mind that an oled panel can get burning on it if you're not careful but a majority of panels nowadays are very good and like the iphone 10 that i have here is really the only phone iPhone that I've seen that has burn-in on it to be honest. All in all, I think OLED panels definitely win for the most part. They are just really good screens in Apple. I think they make a lot of their you know panels with Samsung and they've made really really good panels with Samsung in my opinion. They're definitely not perfect but they get the job done and I am a huge fan of Apple's OLED screens. However, I will say the LCD panels that Apple makes too, like on the iPhone 11, 
aren't even that bad. And I would say, you know, if you want to save money, getting a phone that has like an LCD panel like this or an IPS panel is totally okay and is totally understandable. But I would still side with something like the iPhone, you know, 12 screens, the iPhone, even 10 screens. Those are really good panels that are going to last a very long time. So that kind of covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, not me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.